Yeah, so <laughs> look at look at all this. This is funny. Uh, it's an old system here. So it doesn't look like this condensing unit is running at all because downstairs in the space it's warm. We have a north and a south side of the space. This condensing unit does the south side. This one does the north side. The north side is warm. The south side is cool. So I think there's a problem with this machine. Let's dig into it a bit further. So this is a 575 volt unit and I have checked for power at the terminal block, it's correct. I checked it coming in the switch and leaving the switch, which is a breaker, pretty much. And I have checked it on both sides. We have power coming through. Let's check the 24 volt side. According to the wiring diagram, we should have 24 volts on one, terminal one, goes through some stuff here and then we should be getting 24 volts on two. This will go through our pressure switches and eventually we will come to, through the time delay and all that, to the compressor contact here. So we have to check if we have it on one and then we have to check if we have it on two. What's happened here is here's one and two there, right? Two red wires. These two red wires go through this relay. There's a BAS and I think the BAS energizes this relay and the contacts close for this. So our first step is to see if this relay is energized because if it's not, it's a control problem, like a, a building automation system problem. But if it is energized and we have power through this contact across these terminals and back through the safeties, then it's a problem with this condensing unit. We gotta find that so out. That relay is energized. There's power moving through it. Here's terminals one and two here with my meter set to volts across it. We should be reading zero if there is no potential difference. So that means we have power across these contacts. If I went to ground on each one, I would read 24 volts. So there it is to ground on one. And then on two. So I got 24 volts. So we should be running here, but we're not. So we got to find out what's wrong. So I'm going to make a guess, and sometimes this guess is right, that this high pressure switch is tripped. I'm going to reset it and see what happens. So when I push it, I don't actually feel it resetting at all. So I don't think it's the, the high pressure switch. Now the other thing we can try is resetting the oil failure control. You can see this unit's had better days. We're gonna to try to reset the oil failure control and see if that does anything. And I'm not seeing anything here. There's, there's nothing resetting here either. So it doesn't look like the high pressure switch or the oil failure switch are the problem with this machine at the moment. So it doesn't look like the, the high pressure switch is tripped. It doesn't look like the oil failure switch is tripped. But we're gonna to have to go the old fashioned way because there's also a low pressure switch there. We're gonna to have to shut the power off and ohm these out to see which one has opened up. If you look here, we don't have, we have 24 volts in here, but we don't have it flowing across. So our L and M terminals on the oil failure control are closed. I will leave a link up above here for you guys to check out more information on oil failure controls as well. So there's the low pressure switch right there. Two blue wires, I have disconnected them and I'm checking across them in the ohm setting, and guess what? Open line, so these are open. So we have to get our gauges or our probes, put it on that connection there, and see if it's actually got low pressure. Because when I take the cap off and just push the, the Schrader core in, you can hear a little bit of pressure behind there, but I don't know how much. So we're gonna have to get our gauges and stick them on to verify that. Now, that could be, if it is low on pressure, it could be the fact that we're low on charge, or the solenoid valve downstairs did not energize when this thing called for cooling. That solenoid didn't open it up with that inrush of pressure. It could be that, it could be other things too. We have an accumulator right here. That accumulator could be somehow compromised. So there's there's a bunch of things we gotta check here. All right, I got the probes. We're gonna stick one of them on here, at least for now, and verify if we actually have low pressure and then we're gonna have to figure out why. Okay, the smart probe is on and I am getting 18 PSI. So yes, the low pressure switch is doing its job 100%. So we have to figure out, are we short of refrigerant 
or is there another problem here? All right, so I went downstairs. There's two air handlers, two solenoids for this one condenser unit. I couldn't really take a video down there. The customer was down there, and they were hanging out and stuff. It was a kitchen area. So uh, both solenoids for both air handlers, they are not energized. I put my screwdriver on the top, and usually you can feel that magnetic pull, and you can actually feel them humming and, and buzzing. And I even put my meter on it, check power, no power there. Solenoids are not energized. I called our controls guy. He's going to go in the BAS and see if he can look into this a bit further. Okay, I got in touch with the controls guy. The condenser unit is running. It's cooling. The space is actually dropping in temperature. The supply air has just dropped below 60 degrees. I was just on the phone with him. So the thing's running. It's cooling. But as you've seen inside, there are some oil stains and whatnot. So I think this might need a bit of a leak check just to make sure there's no major leaks in there. Like it could have been old oil from old repairs. This thing is old. And as I showed you, I mean, look, look at the state of everything up here. So um, that's another one in the bag, guys, for now. Happy HVACing.